the Lord be with you. Well, good morning and welcome. And thank you for joining us for this online service of morning worship. It is the 15th Sunday after Trinity, and we've had some really nice weather this week. Um, we hope you enjoyed this online service wherever you are in the world. Our church will remain open on Sundays for Sunday service at 9.15 a.m. at Hawthorne. Uh, we continue to still wear masks and encourage everyone to practice social distancing uh, while the COVID pandemic still continues. And uh, our online services will also continue. Our readings this morning are from the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verses 20 to 33, Psalms 19, the epistle of James, chapter 3, verses 1 to 12, and the gospel of Mark, chapter 8, verses 27 until the end. We come from scattered lives to meet with God. Let us recognize God's presence with us now. As God's people, we have gathered. Let us worship God together now, across the miles yet join. Let us pray. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people and kindle in us the fire of your love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the light of Jesus, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who once were dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. So may God the Father forgive us by the death of the Son and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the squares she raises her voice. At the busiest corner she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing, and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my word known to you. Because I have called, and you refused. Have stretched out my hand, and no one heeded. And because you have ignored all my counsel, and one of none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you, when panic strikes you like a storm, and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, and I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord would have none of my counsel, and despise all my reproof. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way, and be sated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure, and will live at ease, without dread of disaster. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from Psalm. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims this handiwork. One day pours out its song to another, and one night unfolds knowledge to another. They have neither speech nor language, and their voices are not heard. Yet their sound has gone out into all lands, and their words to the ends of the world. In them has he set a tabernacle for the sun, that comes forth as a bridegroom out of his chamber, and rejoices as a champion to run his course. It goes forth from the end of the heavens and runs to the very end again, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, jumping from the honeycomb. By them also is your servant taught, and in keeping them there is a great reward. Who can tell how often they offend? Oh, cleanse me from my secret faults. Keep your servant also from presumptuous sins, lest they be dominion over me, so I shall be undefiled and innocent of great offence. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Epistle from James 
This reading is from the book of James, chapter 3, verse 1 through 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters. For you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessings and curses. My brothers and sisters, this ought not be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine figs? No more salt water yield fresh. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord according to Mark. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Praise to you, O Christ. Today's reading from the Old Testament, the book of Proverbs and of Psalms, seem quite striking and effective in sending a message across. We heard boldly from the book of Proverbs a passage which stands out. How long, O simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? And in the book of Psalms, this passage, which complements the previous reading, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. Striking verses encouraging us to contemplate the plea for wisdom, the disadvantages of refusal or ignorance, but also, and more importantly, a promise to those that hear the beauty of wisdom. The, the Bible Project describes the book of Proverbs as sharing short sayings of God's wisdom. They remind us to fear the Lord and offer practical instructions on how we can live our lives well. The book of Proverbs is also attributed to Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Therefore, it is believed to have been written during the reign of King Solomon in Jerusalem between 1015 and 975 before Christ. While studying these readings throughout the week to prepare for today's service and reflections, I couldn't help but notice the similarities in terms of events and what was happening back then, almost 3,000 years ago, when compared to today. One of the commentaries by Frederick Brotherton Mayer, a famous author of religious books and articles, had reflected on just that. The readings paint a picture of back then, and we heard in verses 21, at the busiest corner she cries out, at the entrance of the city gates she speaks, how long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? And it is a remarkable picture of the world as it is today. Imagine the streets being filled with crowds rushing to get to work, idle sightseers, shoppers, and amongst all this the ringing appeal of Christ in our hearts being preached, and the people against Christ mocking and ridiculing those who speak out and live their faith. I'm sure we've all seen this in city centres, someone preaching, while some people just walk past and look, other people could stop, 
and some people they mock and ridicule. And we've all experienced this to some degree ourselves as well. It also relates to the reading from Psalms this morning, which was written to the chief musician, a Psalm of David, about the works and the Word of God, a Psalm of the two books, Nature and Scripture. We hear about nature's silence, no speech, no language mentioned in the third verse, and we can imagine the sacred stillness of God. And in the fourth verse, yet their sound has gone out into all lands, and their words to the ends of the world, setting a tabernacle for the sun, imagining nature's heart being strung to the glory of God, and Jesus being our son, as mentioned in Malachi chapter 4 verses 2. The point being made in that commentary I don't think has anything to do with sightseeing, rushing to go to work, or shopping as being sinful or bad as such. Working can be necessary to provide for our daily needs, food and shelter, shopping in moderation as well, and sightseeing can be a pleasant hobby and which is refreshing. The point being made I think is more towards the imbalance of our material life and more so towards those who ridicule and mock faith. And when facing these types of challenges, it is always welcoming and encouraging to think that there is a promise to those who hear the beauty of wisdom. I remember when I used to work in the city centre in Newcastle years ago, and sometimes I would get the metro to work. Walk, walking past the markets and corner shops, I would pick up a chocolate bar on my way to work. And sometimes it could get a little annoying when the lady at the fruit and vegetable market stall used to shout in your ear as you used to walk past, 10 apples for a quid, or a punnet of grapes for a quid, and over the road, one pound fish. It used to ring in my ear, even halfway from my shift I'd be sat on my desk and still hear the same offers. And although I would usually just walk past, one morning I thought I'd go for the apple option, try something different, something healthy. It didn't cost much either, but just one apple. And when I told the lady at the market that I'd finally given in and went for the healthy option, swapping the chocolate bar for an apple, she just laughed at me and said, of course, it's cheaper, healthier, and you'll have better energy compared to sugar. You'll feel better. And so, although not directly linked to the readings mentioned in this morning, there is, however, a sense that the books within the Bible, such as the Proverbs and Psalms, for example, offer us practical instructions on how we can live well. And looking towards the New Testament, the two readings read this morning were from the Epistle of James and the Gospel of Mark. And they relate so well to the previously mentioned readings in the Old Testament. The book of James, according to the Bible Project, makes reference to key points from the Sermon on the Mount and calls on Jesus' followers to live wisely. It is a general epistle of James, and it encourages us as students to understand the importance of manifesting faith through our works or actions and not just simply hearing them. It also encourages us to further seek the crown of life as promised, and upon researching this week for today's reflection, it was good to find out that James was a servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, and that tradition holds that James, like Jude and Simon, were children of Mary and Joseph. And therefore, James would have been the brother of Jesus Christ. Mark's Gospel, which introduces Jesus as a leader who suffers to save his people, leaving the reader to decide if Jesus is the promised Messiah, is believed to have been written between 64 and 70 AD. And in this morning's readings of the New Testament, we hear the continued wisdom and call to reflect on ourselves. In James's reading, verse 4, we heard, Or look at ships, though they are large, that it takes strong winds to drive them. Yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. And in verses 11, does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grape vine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. These verses continue the powerful and striking messages heard before with a good use of imagery. James teaching us the importance of controlling our speech and contrasting the world's wisdom with that wisdom which comes from God. This ties in so well with what was mentioned in the Old Testament reading from Proverbs. It's like the toothpaste exercise where the task is to squeeze all the toothpaste out of the tube and then being asked to put it back in the tube. It's almost impossible and certainly not worth the effort. So James asks us to reflect on the responsibility that we have on what we say. Once we say something and the word comes out, 
it is impossible to reverse and us to take careful consideration and responsibility over our words. And we see this sometimes in politicians, for example, promising something which later doesn't deliver, only to be later questioned in public. The shame and sadness of having to face up to that, and we can all be guilty of this. Practical life lessons and wisdom continued in the Epistle of James. The theme carries on in the Gospel of Mark, and the verses which stood out were in verse 33. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. In verse 38, Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Continuing the theme of wisdom, wisdom of this world and wisdom of God. The disadvantages of refusing God's word through ignorance, but most importantly, the promise to those who hear the beauty of wisdom. And so I pray for myself and for all of us this morning, that we may aim to be good men and women by not offending in word or action, but by speaking with a new tongue. Let our words, like our deeds, be filled with faith and hope and love. And let these three great Christian values, which are so desperately needed in today's world, be spoken under the influence of the Spirit where tears can be dried, hearts can be healed, lives can be elevated, hope can return, and confidence can prevail. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
We affirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a slave. He was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Let us intercede for others. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of being able to speak to you directly through prayer. Fill your church with wisdom that may reflect your love and light and be an image of your goodness. Guide all who preach and teach in your name, and we pray for a deepening of unity among all Christians. We gather before you today to express our concerns for the church and the world, and to thank you for your compassion and all that you provide for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, your Son ended creation, that all might be made new. Look in mercy on our broken world, and speak to all people that they may hear the message of peace. Guide and guard those who speak out for justice and mercy and face the wrath of undemocratic leaders and governments. We pray for all those caught up in the unfolding devastation in Afghanistan, the military, the people in fear for their lives, the women and the children. We humbly ask that you will surround them with your protective arms and give them hope in the face of adversity. May all who arrive in this country be shown compassion and safe refuge as they begin to build new lives, and we ask that they may find your love through Jesus Christ. We pray for our Queen and government and the leaders in the rest of the world. Sharpen their consciences and give them courage to make wise decisions, making wrongs right and meeting the needs of all who suffer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for family and colleagues, friends and loved ones, for neighbours and strangers, for those whom we break bread at home, at work, in the church and in our community. We pray particularly for those among our friends and families who do not know you and whose faith has been shaken or fallen away. We pray for children, teachers and administrators as they begin the new school year and pray for organisations that are starting to meet for the first time since the COVID pandemic began. As we pray for our local community, please show us how we can best serve people who are struggling in any way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Caring God, we pray for all those who are afflicted by physical, emotional or mental illness. Help them keep their eyes fixed on you and give them the courage to face the trials and temptations that may come. Bring healing and comfort for people around the world suffering from the short and long-term effects of COVID-19. Speed their recovery and slow the spread of the virus. We thank you for the efforts of all those involved in treating, testing and caring for patients, and ask for your protection over them as they go about their work. Lord, we pray for those in our local communities. As the COVID pandemic continues to challenge our daily lives, so we pray. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. In this time of uncertainty and distress, sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for those kept fresh in our memory and for those long forgotten. For all who shared our homes, our places of work and our church life. For all who helped to shape our lives. We pray too for the recently departed, asking that they all find rest in your heavenly kingdom as we commend them to eternal life with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, as we move into another week, deliver our eyes from tears and our feet from stumbling, and walk with us on our journey of faith as we seek to do your will. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, 
our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we pray a colleague, a special prayer for today, the 15th Sunday after Trinity. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, not always abiding in you. They may be found steadfast in faith and active in service through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray with confidence as our Father taught us in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever, forever and ever, ever and ever and ever. Amen. 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 Forever. Amen. 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 Faithful God, may we who share in this time of worship glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord, now and forever. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love, and as you have fed us with your presence, then make us one in heart and mind, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. For God said, I will not leave you, nor forsake you. So we can confidently say that the Lord is my help, I will not fear. It is the Lord who goes before you, he will be with you, and he will not leave you, or forsake you. Do not be dismayed. And that concludes today's service of morning worship. I hope you've enjoyed it, and that it's been of some comfort to you. It's been fun and interesting at the same time recording this service uh, in this city centre park. We've had horses galloping, sirens in the background, children playing and occasionally the one or two people stopping to have a look as well. It is great to see so many people returning to church after the lifting of the COVID restrictions and we will continue to look after our neighbour by practising hygiene, maintaining social distances and wearing a mask as well. So thank you again for joining us this morning and thank you to all who have been involved in readings and in preparation for this service. And if you'd like to be involved in any of the online readings, please email us or find our contact details on our website. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.